Hi, I'm Dr. Ling from Oasis Eye Specialist Johor Bahru. This video demonstrates a repair of traumatic iridotaresis, simultaneous retropupillary iris crawl, intraocular lens implantation. This patient was referred post-plant trauma with dislocated lens. He is a 69 years old, has had a primary sclera suturing for last circumferential sclera laceration near the limbus. On examination, as one can see, a large inferior traumatic iris coropoma with 4 clock hours of iridotaresis. There is sclera thinning near to the limbus and fundus examination reveal dislocated of crystalline lens. How do you approach this case? So far, the first goal here is to do the vitrectomy lens fragmentation for dislocated lens. Second goal is perform iridotaresis repair and pupiloplastic repair and insert the intraocular lens. Do you prefer iris claw lens but concerned about inadequate iris tissue to support or do you prefer sclera fixation lens in the post sclera repair and sclera thinning eye? Here, we perform 23 gauge vitrectomy and lens fragmentation. Then, we perform iridoplastic and polyn 9 o suture is used. The needle passes across the sphincter to sphincter through the cornea. And suture is pulled out using forceps and modified hook, which I make myself by bending the tips of the instrument into half rounded to facilitate the retrieving of suture. Most surgeons prefer repair the iris root followed by pupilloplastic. My approach here is to perform the pupilloplastic first for my desired pupil size. After the iris repair, the pupil size should not be too small or constricted since we still need to insert the intraocular lens and for fundus examination in the future. Again, we perform the iridotaresis and using the 27 gauge needle to capture the needle. Mattress suture technique is used. Now, myostate is injected into the anterior chamber to constrict the pupil now, superior peritomy is done and sclera tunnel incision about 5.5 mm is made using the 2.75 keratom. I prefer the tunnel follow the smart pattern, narrow at the center and slightly wider at side. Now, iris core lens is inserted into the anterior chamber after filled with viscoelastic. And then the lens is rotated into horizontal position. Canula attached to viscoelastic pass through the parasynthesis. The first enclavation of the iris is done nicely, but the second enclavation piece through the iris tissue. Again, superior iridotaresis is repaired and now the lens positioning at the center. Viscoelastic is removed and additional myostate is injected into the anterior chamber. Sclerotomy wound is closed with white cruise suture. The scleral tunnel wound do not require suture. Lastly, we give subconjunctiva, steroid and antibiotic. Combined iris repair surgery and retropupillary iris colon show to be a safe surgical technique. Even after 2 years of follow-up, the lens is still stable and center located. Again, combined pupilloplastic and retropupillary iris core lens is safe and flexible. In this case, we prefer to avoid sclera fixation in severe traumatic eye with sclera thinning. The most challenge in this case is perform the iris repair for iridotaresis and pupilloplasty and leave adequate 
iris tissue to support the iris claw lens. If there is not adequate iris tissue to support, you may need to convert to scalar fixation. Another disadvantage of iris claw lens is Encrevation of the lens may cause more iris damage and iris atrophy in late. My advice in this case is do not underestimate the degree of iris injury in traumatic eye. Overall, iris reconstruction combined with iris core lens is flexible and safe. We also successfully implanted the iris core lens in abnormal iris structure. In the case of large pupil from traumatic mitrasis, we also successfully repositioning of dislocated iris core lens back to the iris and repositioning of the inferior subluxated iris core lens back to the iris. Thank you for the organizer and my ex-colleague Dr. Lim and Dr. Daniel. Thank you for watching.